This hot rod's back in, get the jaws pipe, Y pipe, and their pressure sensor relocation kit all installed and done. Uh, the owner didn't really want to wait until it was at a break in, just kind of got the itch to get this thing all tuned up. So we're gonna throw that on and yeah, hopefully get some snow soon so he can go out and ride it, put some miles on, and then we can figure out what we're gonna have to do for clutching and stuff because they claim that pipe makes big power. So I'm excited to dig into this later and get that all in there and see how it all fits up and everything. Got a bunch of shop cleaning and some trailer organization stuff to do out around the shop. So I got to do that, lunch, whatever, get onto this late afternoon and see how it goes. Jaws kit is all opened up and unboxed here. Pretty nice setup here. I like how, whoa. I like how they've kind of, you know, hand fabricated a bunch of little brackets and things like this to house the pipe and relocate stuff. It's cool to see, you know, actual hand built fabricated stuff here and not just like something that's cranked out in a CNC. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just cool for me to see stuff like this that's actually hand built by someone, you know? I don't know, I just like it. I think it's cool. It's not like it's, anything crazy wild or anything but it's just a cool approach to see things built this way is all i'm kind of i'm kind of getting at here go ahead and get the old stuff out of there wide pipe off and all that i think the bottom bolts might be a little bit tricky but we'll find out when we get in there This is interesting. The Skidoo Turbo Jobber here has a sort of rubber gasket on the pipe that obviously went around the donut gasket too. So they got this thing all sorts of sealed up here, which is really cool. Look at this little piece. Look at that little rubber jobber there. These Y pipe to pipe springs are some boys. These things are serious. I mean, in comparison, this is the four that are on the turbo or the pipe to turbo. These are the Y pipe to the pipe. These things are gnarly. Some neat little things to see. They got this, this rubber gasket's cool. This is a really cool idea. I'm surprised this thing holds up in there, but that's cool. For your Y pipe bolts down in here, you might be able to do it with a straight. I'm gonna go with a bull nose here. Let's see the bottom. Yeah. You can probably get away with a straight Allen, but to simplify my life and make it easier, I'm gonna use one of these, if this thing will ever focus up, there we go. One of these bull-nosed six mil Allens. I swear I had one of these in a one piece socket style, or not, not socket, but I swear I had one in a one piece style like this. Unfortunately, I can't find it. I checked my race trailer, it's not in there either. So we're gonna go with a quarter inch drive one and then it will go into the adapter here, boop, little magnet jobby adapter. And then I'm gonna go to the 3 8 drive just to break it free and to torque it in the end. I don't like having all these adapters stacked up on here, but what am I gonna do? I don't have a one piece like I thought I did. So I'll tape all these together also. So sometimes this bull nose kind of gets a little bit stuck if you're a little crooked. And then when you go to take the socket and assembly off, it ends up popping out. Then you risk dropping the bit down in the pan. So take some tape, tape all three junctions together and then to the extension. That way this is all one unit, can't fall in the belly pan. They've also added on the Comp Turbo, the lower bait, the brace plate. I think a lot of the mountain sleds come factory with this, but I don't think all the trail sleds do. I'm not positive on that, but it is in there obviously on these units. With all that said, I'm gonna tape some adapters and whatnot together here and get this Y pipe out. Most of these, can you get out my way, boy? 
Most of these Y-pipe bolts came out pretty well. Um, with a straight socket, it would be really difficult, I think, to get the bottom ones. And even these top ones, they come out on an angle down kind of towards the Y here. That mark was actually on this, I want to point out, before I got in here. I'm assuming at the assembly line, I mean, you can see there's a little bit of a mark on this one too. I barely touched that. That one was already there. Anyway, those three came out pretty difficult. Um, the others were just like break them free and they spun right out even though they have the Loctite on them, right? They come out firm, but they come out. These three were definitely a lot stiffer and once you break them free, they really start to tighten up. So just work them back and forth. Like once you get to that really hard spot, flip your ratchet, go back in a little bit, flip it, go back out. Just kind of work that Loctite through and then they'll come on out. Once they got to this point, kind of like a quarter inch gap or so, then they really started to free up and then you can take your little quarter inch ratchet or whatever and get in here and zip them out the rest of the way. So there's that little thing worth mentioning. And then I would recommend wearing either long sleeves or putting some towels and stuff over this because even though this is just plastic, a lot of these edges are pretty aggressive. They're not like sharp where they're gonna cut your arms, but they are gonna dig right in and leave marks and stuff all over. Like you can see a little bit even with the sleeves. And not that that's any big deal and people are gonna be like, oh, don't be a baby, but you don't want to be all cut up in here when you're working on this. So yeah, long sleeves or throw some towels over it. Just makes the experience better when you're not constantly getting dug into. Why pipe is out of there. Gasket separated, really clean. I'm gonna to to take a little bit of a razor blade to it real quick in a couple spots. There's just tiny little spots of gasket right here. And I think there's one on the other side, but all in all, popped it out of there pretty clean. You have the classic new sled break-in kind of oiling out of the Y-pipe there in the bottom. I'll clean that up. That's very normal. Moving over here, you can see the two Y-pipes. You can see the outlet difference there. Jaws unit, pretty sweet. Got the cylinder all cleaned up. Those surfaces are all smoothed out. Took some red scuff pad to it. Got all the gasket material off. Brake clean the flange or the mating surface rather. So it's all cleaned up, good to go. On the Jaws Y-pipe, they don't have you run gaskets. You just use orange RTV gasket maker. I'm gonna grab some of that from the cabinet over there and I'll get the, the GoPro propped up and cover that. Pretty straightforward, no big deal there. Moving on to the bolts here, I'm also going to go ahead and swap these stock flat washers out for, this can stay open here, let's do this zoom out, don't knock everything over, for some of these guys right here. So we're going to switch over to these Nord locks or wedge locks. This is what on the XS chassis we used to have to use. This was kind of the only thing that would keep the Y-pipe bolts tight on the older 800. I don't want to have to pull this apart and with the boost and all that stuff. I'm not even gonna mess around. We're throwing wedge locks on it along with the proper Loctite and the proper torque. Shouldn't have any issues there. So that's that. Grab some of our, da, 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 da. I know it's in here somewhere. There we go. So this stuff, the ultra copper gasket maker for exhaust. We've run this stuff on crazy turbo applications. So on turbo manifolds where we don't even run a gasket at all from the manifold to the turbo. This is the stuff to use as long as your flanges are machined really well. You're good to go with this. You don't need a gasket. All righty, orange gasket making time. So yeah, you're not gonna need to lay this stuff on here and build it way up. You're just gonna need a light skim coat all the way around. This flange looks like it's machined really well and very flat, and the cylinder head looks really, really damn good. So again, you're not gonna need a lot. I'm probably going to do a thin little coat around and then spread it with my finger, make sure it's all good, and it's good to go. You also, if you're using a used tube like this, as you're applying this, sometimes you'll get the hardened chunks of the stuff that build up in the cap area. So just watch as you're applying this around here, and you'll feel them after when you go through with your finger. But just watch for those big chunks to come out. You don't want any of those on the surface when you bolt it up. You want this to all be fresh uh, material here, not any of the old dried up stuff. I feel like a lot of the things I mentioned, you know, are like 
common sense, duh, whatever. But if someone's new to this, you know, like a lot of you guys probably have experience with this stuff and it's no big deal and it is common sense, right? But if someone's new and this is their first time and they're like tackling this stuff on their own, I feel like these little tips might help a lot if they're getting in there and they're like, you know what, I'm going to go for it on my own here. And they haven't really done a lot of mechanical stuff. So I'm going to keep mentioning things like this. And uh, yeah, hopefully it helps people that are digging into this for the first time or if it's been a while since they've gotten hands on with something or whatever. But yes, sir. You don't really need to go outside the bolt perimeter here. Just the main circle here is all you really need to do. And you can see this isn't really built up crazy high. You know, there's a little bit of a high spot here. But as you tighten it, it'll spread out and do what it needs to do. Again, these surfaces are really good, so it's not like you're trying. It's not like it's not like you're working on a 2008 Subaru Outback with the uh, header to converter gasket there where it's all torn apart in pieces and you're trying to fill, you know, some eighth inch gaps. You don't really need to lay this stuff in here too thick. This side's a little bit heavy. So I'll probably try to squeeze some of it off here and then we'll lay it around again. It's, it's not really a big deal if you have excess. It's just going to expand out, you know, out the sides and some of it will go in. Usually what goes in does end up getting burnt, but we're going to go ahead, clean off whatever excess we've got here. Try to keep these airways as open and free flowing as possible. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully this comes out pretty clear that it's not really thick. You don't need to rush. This isn't like, you know, two minute super glue that's going to set up right away. But you do want to be uh, proficient with it. All right, I'm going to move the camera and then I'm going to get throwing this thing in. Next up, we gotta install the pipe support bracket. With this pipe support bracket, you take out the left side or the PTO side nut here, take the nut off, uh, 15 millimeter nut, 16 millimeter head on the back side of the bolt. This one inch spacer slides onto there. This will go on and bottom out against the spacer. Tighten up your set screw. I'm gonna put a little dab of Loctite on there. Tighten the set screw up, and then the pipe goes onto the end out here. You take one washer, drop it on there, this grommet comes out of the factory pipe, goes into your pipe support bracket hanger here. Then this will end up sliding on with the grommet. If I can see this right, boop, onto there. And then you will take your other washer, boop, onto there. Well, actually this way, boop, washers are directional. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but they are stamped in a way that you can see, hopefully, there you go. This side has a very flat kind of cut edge. And this side has a nice rounded edge. So generally your rounded edge side goes up where your nut and fastener is. And then your other cut edge part goes against your piece. So once you do the washer on the top side, then your nylon lock nut goes on. And I'm assuming with the spacing of it and stuff, it's just gonna barely engage the lock nut. You don't wanna squish the rubber. You just wanna bring it up till it's snug on the rubber. And as long as it's engaging in the nylock, you're good to go. So it's hitting on the bumper over here. Uh, the tin flange or aluminum flange as it wraps around is rubbing on the bumper down here. Uh, I'm gonna pull this back out and bend that flange downward so that it clears the bumper more. Everywhere else is good, but it is uh, right on the bumper there. We got half an inch or so now of gap over there. It was literally touching right up against the bumper. Um, that was actually kind of holding it. If you tightened it, it would have just been rammed right into it. But other than that one little rib and it being slightly tricky to get into here, fitting in is pretty good. I'm gonna get the springs, throw all those on. That'll be fun to uh, get those big old heavy HD bastards in there.
righty, I got the top two springs on only by utilizing this cross post and using my tool and prying against that. This spring, like I said, is really gnarly. The top ones, like I said, also the only way I was able to get those in was to pry off of this. With this lower one on down here and the spring tool, you can probably see in some of the time lapse, I'm pulling on that thing with everything I've got and I'm still a quarter inch away from here. That said, I really don't know what to do about this. I really don't wanna to have to pull the Y pipe back off to go and bend their tabs in. Yeah, I really don't know what to do on that. So yeah, I'm gonna walk away and take a break for a little bit and uh, maybe something will come to me overnight or in the morning. But uh, yep, we'll uh, cut back to it then. This is wild. I needed this stuff here to get the one PTO side spring on. I still haven't gotten the mag side, but I did get the PTO. I walked away, thought about it for a little bit, sweared at myself, came back, sweared at myself, looked at it again. So the only way I got that one down there, it was still really tough, but got it on, was to take the like two and a half foot pry bar Go through here, again, utilizing this cross rail to pry. So you have enough room without moving any of the sensors and stuff over here for pipe temp and pipe pressure that you can take the pry bar, go down through here along this crossbar. Hopefully this all comes out because the camera's kind of broad view so you can get an idea of what's going on. Then take your spring puller down through against the crossbar as well, hook the spring, and then as you work the spring puller back towards the rear of the sled, you also need to get the pry bar behind the puller like this. So you're using everything to lever off of this upper crossbar. So once this is in, you hook your spring, you just gotta do this number at the same time and then, you know, angle it right to get the spring into the tab down there. I will, uh, I'll update y'all when I figure out how to get the mag side spring on. I think I have this somewhat sorted out. Uh, I dropped the spring in here once already and I said, I don't wanna break the pipe pressure and temp sensor bundle right here, the whole bracketry and everything. It's one uh, 5 sixteenths, eight mil should be roughly the same, but the eight mil was very loose on the bolt, so the 5 sixteenths fit better. Odd, but whatever. One bolt, pull that out, uh, attaches to the bumper and whatnot too. Yank that out of there, you got two connectors. Kind of the same deal again of this bar and you're gonna have to pry off of this flange on the pipe here and then utilize your pry bar again off of the crossbar to try and assist it. The sketchy part is you can't really get a good grip behind this now. You end up kind of coming on top of it like this, trying to work it over. Um, yeah, a lot of fun. Like I said, the tabs are off a little bit. These springs are super heavy, but I mean, they're making a lot of pipe pressure to make a lot of boost, make a lot of power. That's just part of how it goes. Um, I wanna keep this type of stuff in the video and I don't mean it to be negative and drag jaws through the mud or anything like that. These are just the emotions and frustrations that you go through when you start playing with aftermarket stuff. You know, me being me and building things myself, I always make sure that it fits and it's applicable and it's easy to do for me, for myself. Kits, you cannot do that. Kits need to be broad spectrum. They need to fit all different ranges and tolerances and all that stuff. So you end up with things like this where it's just difficult. It fits, it all works, but it's difficult. Am I in frame? Yeah, okay, cool. I bet I bet in frame. Sweet. So, yeah, I just want to leave this stuff in here because it, it shows the emotion and the frustration and the process and all that stuff. And I by no means want it to seem like Jaws is doing something wrong. There are just ways in my head that I would probably build it different, and everyone, I think, is going to have that for the most part. But anyway, moving on, I think this is going to work with the two bars and the leverages and all that. So let's, let's see if I can get this thing in here now. It's on a tab. If I had a spare pry bar, it'd be really easy. You just start grinding a bevel into here so it kind of centers itself on the on the spring puller and doesn't come out. But um, oh, you little bitch! Ah, no. Dude, this is fucking rugged, man. Oh, we got it. We got them. All right, so that's that. Now, if I ever had to do another one, I would know exactly how to do it. I need my two pry bars for all of you. You're welcome. Um, move that, pry off those things. Now you guys can blaze right through it and hook those on, no big deal, um, and not have to deal with the frustration of trying to figure it out because I just did it for you. So 
some of you might even be strong enough. Some of you fucking like loggers and shit out there, you farm boys can probably just grab a hold of that and pull the whole thing. But I bet the sled would start walking before you can even move that spring far enough. Those things are gnarly, man. Wow. Cool, that's done. Sensors and stuff back in, and then I'm gonna call it for the night. Uh, I'll put the top ones on, and then I gotta do for the comp turbos, they have a reroute for the pipe pressure sensor and stuff, and they tap it into the airbox instead. We'll cover that tomorrow. You'll flash into it, no delay. I'm out of here. In the shop again getting ready to finish up the jaws pipe install on this comp turbo here they do have for the comp turbos a pipe pressure sensor kit essentially what this pipe pressure sensor kit does is take the sensor source from the pipe and we're replacing that with a boost source from the intake manifold or the air box if you will so essentially you plug the pipe you go ahead and you reroute the hose over to the air box drill and tap the air box add a fitting and then you hook up the breather line or pressure line from the air box to the sensor. That keeps the ECU happy and allows the pipe to work its magic and produce more power. I'm gonna go ahead and give the instructions a look over again, get the vacuum out, get the drill bits going, get everything all ready to go and drill that air box. What I'm gonna end up doing is basically greasing the drill bit and using the vacuum. I'll probably zip tie it or tape it or do something to hold it where I need the vacuum to be. Use that method so the grease kind of picks up chips and then any that fall off of there that you don't catch, the vacuum will suck those up. Then you just go real nice and slow and make sure that, or it's kind of hard to make sure, but you do your best to try not to get any chips down into the air box. Do your best, obviously, to keep all that debris out of there. I keep one of these handy in the shop all the time just because you never know when you're gonna need to do something a little bit funky like this. So I take the seamstress rule, we're gonna go to our one inch mark, I'm gonna fold that over right on the line. This thing's a little bit easier to handle. Take our three inch, which is now two inches, correct, right? Because we folded back one. Put that guy right on the center of the pop rivet there. And then I'm gonna take my paint marking pen, put my little dot on the air box. So that's a little high because it's a big round tip. So we gotta come down about an eighth of an inch. And that's about our spot. I don't think this is incredibly crucial. I don't think you need to have this you know, within a millimeter or anything crazy like that. But me being me, I like to get it as close as I can to their description. Like I said, I don't think this is any issue. I think you could have this thing down here. It might get in the way of the latch. If you're up here, it might get in the way of the panel. I think this is a pretty damn good spot. And like I said, I think you can probably be pretty much anywhere in this region. But if you install it way off from the instructions and your panel doesn't close, that's on you. So. You go you just gotta take your time grease the bit you could see i'd go in get a bunch of chunks pull the bit back out clean it re-grease etc repeat this uh air box is actually a good bit thicker than i would have thought it would be yeah it's all of all of an eighth probably closer to 3 16 thick Going back to your instructions here next step is take your tap tap the hole they want you to only go halfway up barely halfway up the threads here. So it says here, supplied 3 8 NPT tap, yeah, but da ba da ba da, 11 30 second wrench, 10 mil 12 point socket, fits this hex pretty good. There's a little bit of wobble room here. If you pinch it together, it can stay straight. So I'm gonna go and do my usual tape trick, tape the living hell out of this so that it stays straight. And that way I can use a long extension and get out here where I can actually push on it pretty well and maintain even straight pressure with a ratchet. After I tape this up, I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple threads started into here. Then I'm gonna take this back out, grease the remaining portion of it so that way any fine pieces don't fall in. Tap it halfway on the tap. Should be good to go. Run the thing in. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
The grease is also a really nice trick because as you can see, it helps show you exactly how far in you are. Obviously you could, you know, thread it in and make a Sharpie mark or something along those lines, but this is, you know, two things at once, right? Get two birds stoned at once. Collects a bunch of debris and it marks where you are. And like you can see, we're right about halfway. It doesn't say anything in the instructions about adding some Teflon tape on here or Teflon, um, glue or paste or whatever you'd like to call it, the liquid version, right? I'm gonna go ahead and add some of that on here when I thread that in just to help that thing seal up and be extra safe. I just soaked an end of my rag here with Bright Clean so that it was saturated, wiped the hole down, and then made sure to put a little bit of extra pressure around the hole so that way some of that Bright Clean can seep in there along those threads and kind of hopefully get a little bit of that grease out of there, dry up some of the grease and whatnot that's in the air box there. That way that Teflon tape really can get a good seal in there. So I hope you can see in the time lapse there that the fitting was a little bit tricky to get started. It was a little close on the brake hose retainer here that's riveted on. Again, I was kind of precise with my marking and maybe I was off a little bit or whatever, but just keep in mind that you, you're tapping this on the tight side of the tap, right? So you're using the 5 16th bit instead of what would normally come with, or what you would normally use being a 21 64th going into metal. Going into plastic, you need this to be a really tight fit here and you need those threads to be as deep as possible so that it actually holds under boost pressure. Doing so is going to make this fitting a little bit tricky to get inserted and get the thread started. Take your time, be careful with it, make sure you do it appropriately because if you strip the air box, you're gonna have a really bad time. That said, if you drill your hole or you mark your hole and you drill it and you tap it and it's a little bit too close and you just can't seem to get it with this brake hose retainer in here, drill this rivet out. Just go ahead, drill it out, move the hose and everything over, get your thing started, and then re-rivet that in. Don't be afraid to do something like that. Just take your time and make sure you get that threaded in there right the first time so that you don't strip the box out. One more thing before we move up front to the pipe sensor, I wanna talk about tightening this fitting. Obviously, you don't wanna over tighten it and strip the box out. What I ended up doing, as you saw, was spin it, tighten it, spin it, tighten it. The wrench was a little bit too long and awkward, so I used the smooth jaw little little guy can nip X pliers there and rotated it around. So I thought it was pretty tight, you know, it took moderate effort, whatever. And then I test it by seeing if I can move it by hand. I was able to get it to start to rotate a little bit. It wasn't like I could just continue to spin it. It took some effort, but it did move a little bit. I was confident to just do one more full rotation from there. And now it's in there pretty good. I'm not pushing obviously as hard as I can. I'm not trying to hulk on this thing and rip it out of there. I can't get it to move now. It's in there. Pretty damn good, that's gonna be plenty. As the instructions say, as you're removing this metal tube here, be very careful not to pull on the barb end up here. You don't wanna damage this junction block at all. So these Oedeker clamp or pinch clamp if you prefer. So right there by my thumb, you need to get a flat blade screwdriver or you can get a pair of side cutters or something like that under there. This little retainer tab there kinda of is bent over just a whisker. But if you pop that free out of there, that'll come off, the whole clamp will release and then you can fish that off of there. Just kind of made me a little uh not mad just like annoyed i guess so i went through all that taped that up real nice with the heat tape so that the pipe can't bother it whatever routed it in a way that makes a lot of sense that i don't know it's very simple right uh downside i'm about a foot too short on the rubber hose here or not even rubber whatever this is so i'm gonna cut this off uh, i'm gonna take it off of the junction where it adapts to the black rubber and then I'm gonna use some of my vibrant silicone vacuum hose that I keep in stock that you can use their supplied hose. You're gonna to have to route it somewhere else. Um, I'm still gonna route it this way, but their supplied hose is too short to run it the way that I would like to. So it is what it is. Got our hose all routed up through here. Like I said, it's a vibrant quarter inch vacuum hose. It's silicone stuff. It's meant for vacuum sources and boost pressure and high temperatures and things like that. 
Summit Racing, part number 2103, okay? That's going to be a 25-foot roll. I think they have shorter sections. To do this routing that I did, you needed about four foot, give or take. Four foot was just a little bit long. I think I cut off like a, a five inch section after that, but four foot is plenty to do this routing. So we'll start at the front by the pipe. How about that? Come off of your sensor off the bottom, hose comes over. I have the T zip tied right here. Let me do a zoom. This zip tie goes through the center of the T. It's not really easy for you to see, but you get the idea, right? The zip tie goes across the center of the T so you're not pinching the hose. Come across the crossbar, up onto the top. Zip tie, zip tie, make the bend here. Up through your upper support, zip tie to the other hose here. Underneath the crossbar. Underneath here, along with your brake line. Then you route under and then behind the brake line over here. The brake line ends up coming up a little bit through here, so then you can go behind it and then snake back under it. Right to here, all done. I don't really know how else you would do it. I mean, I guess with the other hose, you'd have to come up through here and bridge this gap or something. This just seems a lot cleaner and safer to me. It's nowhere near the exhaust valve cable or the steering post or any of that stuff. That's how I did it. Like I said, I need about four foot to route it that way. Bit before I throw the console and everything back on. This is the bolt they supply. It's beveled so that this goes in and seals where the pipe pressure sensor was. I couldn't stand the look of just this bolt sticking out of the pipe. Um, something about that was just really, really throwing me off. Something about just the bolt sticking out of the pipe on a $25,000 sled. I just can't let that leave my shop. So I went and whipped up this little fitting here. This is just an M10 by one brake line fitting. Welded a bubble onto the bottom of it, used the band file, ground that smooth so this will seat in and seal on the taper in the pipe. Welded the top side. You can see there's a little bit of undercut here and there, but it's still going to be better than uh, the big bolt head sticking out that would drive my OCD nuts for the rest of my life. That looks a little more appropriate. That'll do. I know no one would see it in there and the bolt works perfectly fine, but I would know it's there and it would drive me crazy forever. So. This looks way better. Anytime the hood comes off, that's gonna be nice and clean. Love to see it. springs are really rough like you saw you got to get a pry bar and all kinds of stuff some of you might be strong enough out there to pull it you know, without the sled moving or have a buddy hold the sled or two of you or something i don't know either way y pipe springs are a bear the rest of it's relatively straightforward uh, the hose routing is a little bit goofy the hose wasn't really long enough for the way that i wanted to route it but it will reach it just isn't the way my picky ass would put it if there's any questions on how that all went in or anything i missed or overlooked or whatever Put it in the comments, I'll do my best to respond or send you information or whatever I can do, but uh, that's that.